Hey everybody, it's Brooke. I hope you're having a great day. I am going to make my creative daily journal for June and July. If you'd like to do the whole thing start to finish with me, stick around. <music> Okay, so we are going to make a journal, uh, my creative daily journal, and this time I am going to use this children's book, which was a uh, encyclopedia, it's a set actually, of, uh, not really encyclopedia, but just educational children's books. Uh, by Encyclopedia Britannica. I've already taken this one apart, so I am going to use a hardcover and some of the pages from the book because I love the illustrations. And I'm going to cover it and use some of the pages from this flower market kit by Cartabella that I got from Danielle, and I will link Danielle down below. She has great sales on really cool stuff. And I thought this was the prettiest scrapbook paper set. I just couldn't resist it. So that is what I'm going to use. And I already started. I did a lot of prep in advance because we've done this kind of journal before. But um, we have lots of new friends who may not have seen making a journal out of um, an old hard-covered book. A lot of times I'll just use the cover as is. But uh, I love this paper so much I wanted to use it. So, I covered the front already using that Cartabella paper, and I'll show you how I did it on the back, because I'm going to do exactly the same thing. This cardstock, isn't this beautiful? It screams summer to me, uh, but it's really, really thick. You know, Cartabella scrapbook paper is so thick. So, what I'm going to do is take out my, well, actually, first we can figure out where we want stuff to go. So, I'm turning it over. And I'm going to sort of fold it. The cover itself is also kind of thick, the book board. So I kind of um, used my bone folder. I wrapped it around and kind of used my bone folder to shape it a little bit instead of just trying to glue it straight down because it almost needs two score marks to um, fold all the way around the book smoothly, if that makes any sense. Oops, I'm down too low. I think I moved my camera again. I should really stop doing that. So if you just rub along the bottom, kind of wrap it, roll it around a little bit, use your bone folder or your finger or your scissors or whatever, it'll give you an idea where those lines are. So then I'll get out my scoreboard. Whoops! A tool avalanche. I taped down, you know, let me tape this wax paper down a little better because this is going to involve glue. I didn't want to get it right on my mat. I'm trying to do this slowly so it doesn't make a wretched noise. Uh, and my silicone mat is so disgusting, I didn't want to make you guys look at it. So let's see if that helps a little bit. So I'm going to score right along that fold line. I don't know if you guys can see the fold line, but I can. Give that, oop, I jumped the track. Give that a score. Burnish that down. If the paper weren't so thick and the book board weren't so thick, you could just wrap it right around, but I found on doing the front cover, this really helped. And I'm just going to go one-eighth of an inch away, which is one tick mark, for those of you who don't like measuring. One little tick mark on my scoreboard. And that is about the thickness of that book board. So I'll fold that one over too, being kind of careful. When they're that close together, you have to be kind of careful. That folded over as well. And burnish it. And then let's make sure that's sitting in there where we want it. Cut that one where we want it. 
And we'll just do the same thing at the top. This is why I did one in advance because it's like watching paint dry, right? Not all that exciting. Try not to get my giant head in there. Oh, and try to get back on screen where you can see what I'm doing. Just gonna score on that first mark. And jump the track again. And then score right next to it at, oop, let me scoot that out a little bit so you guys can see better. Over one eighth of an inch. And score it again. Wow, I cannot stay in the track. The paper is so thick that it's not catching. I should have used my um, stylus. But there you go, it'll be fine. that other line as well. I couldn't decide which to use on the front and which to use on the back. The paper was so pretty. I think cream might have been a bad choice for the front because, well, you know it's going to get dirty. I'm a messy crafter. Okay. I think that will do it. Pop our cover in there. Look at that. Beautiful. So we can go ahead and trim some of this off. I think my cutter was where the craft lanche was. Oh, what did I do with my scissors? Oh, right in front of my face. Ah. So we'll just trim some of that off. Put it all the way. Brooke, it might be easier. I'll keep this little piece because it's so pretty. And then we'll do the same thing for the side. Although, if this is our cover, this is going to be the edge, is it? Nope, this is going to be the edge going to the inside, so we can take the paper right up to that edge. Okay. So we don't need to fold the paper around on that side. We only need to fold it around on this side. So we'll do that same thing. Mold it around, kind of. Use my bone folder. This is like a workout at the gym, I'm telling you. Everything's fighting back. Try to get that crease lined up. folded. I've enjoyed the envelope journals that I've been using, courtesy of Never Hopeless by Elizabeth, a little smarty. Uh, she reminded me how much fun those are. I will obviously link her down below. Almost always do. Okay, let's make sure that that's going to fit in there. Want to make sure you have a nice smooth fold, a wrap around before you go to start gluing. Yep, we've got a little bit sticking out right here, and that's okay. I, I want to trim that with my scissors, so that's just fine. So what we can do now is take off a little bit of this side because we don't need that much. see it better on the black and white side. Then I'm going to miter my corners, get rid of some of that bulk. So I'm just going to take a little bit and a little bit and a little bit.
just a little sliver and again on this side a little bit of an angle and a little bit of an angle let's get rid of all this we can get rid of our scoreboard oh and I meant to pull out my ATG gun I wonder if it's somewhere close probably not huh of course not well that's okay I realized I have one of those big pink scotch ATGs that I haven't used for I don't know how long forever and it's full of tape so I better use it before it spoils okay so let me make sure I'm doing this right yep we got that right nice cutting job I'm going to cover the cover with some Fabri-Tac get some in the middle so we don't get any bubbles normally I would smooth it all out but it's not coming out that well and the paper is really thick so I'll just, these couple little globby places I'll use my glue spreader make sure we got up to the edge And then let's see, it's probably going to be easier if we do it this way. Is this directional? I hope not. No, it's not. I'm good. Okay, we're good. Don't panic. Get that in there. Everybody line up. I'm kind of glad that we used the Fabri-Tac instead of the ATG because we have that little wiggle room to get it where we want it. And I'm not worried about having the writing on here because it's all going to get covered. Okay, now let's turn this over. It's positioned where we want it. So we'll give it a nice little burnish. Excellent. So that's glued down nicely. Now let's go ahead and glue these parts down. I got out my clamps just in case we need them. Usually the um, Fabri-Tac grabs pretty quick, but just in case, I have some clips. Getting low on Fabri-Tac, yikes. And yeah, it's the 4th of June, I'm behind again. I feel like someone stole my journaling mojo. I like making them. I just haven't been doing my creative daily journal. But every month I make one because maybe my mojo will come back. And I'm just gonna rub this on my desk firmly to make sure we've got a good stick on the edge and it's all folded the way it needs to be. We can come around and do this side. Probably didn't need quite that much overlap, huh? And I'm going down into that double uh, crease that we made to go around the book board to make sure it's grabbing there as well. Don't want bubbly paper, that would stink. Getting this all smooth down. Oh, stop that. E, get down there. And I'll do the same thing. Press down and kind of roll it to make sure that it's going where it needs to go. Press it down and press it down. This part's jumping up a little bit. Come on, you grab. It's very important to talk to your glue. It's the only way it works. Okay, that's not true. All right, and then we'll turn this this way. some glue in there going up to the corner down into here up to the edge be generous with your glue don't want anything coming unglued okay and then I'm just gonna press that corner first kind of tuck that around we got rid of a lot of bulk that's nice do the same thing here 
just kind of press that corner in, wrap it around, and then I'm going to do the same thing that I did on the other side, which is press down on the desk and then kind of roll it and press down. There, we've got nice tight corners, nice. The side, again, I need to trim that a little bit, but that's okay. It, I didn't do a very good job taking the uh, spine out. The spines on these are only about an eighth of an inch, so that was not going to be a choice. Have to make a new one. All right. This one also is being a little tricky. I know there's plenty of glue. It's just not grabbing yet. There we go. I think it's happy now. All right. So let's just grab our scissors and trim this a little tiny bit. Not much. It's going to be covered with uh, fabric anyway, so if it's sticking out a little bit, it's okay. No problem there. Okay, that'll be good. So we have our two covers. Yay! Yeah, cream. I don't know, you guys. Was this a terrible choice? <laughs> nah. Okay, so... They'll go like that. Perfect. Now, what I'm going to do is get our spine in. Let's see, I've already cut it. So this is just a piece of chipboard. Well, it's actually two pieces of chipboard that I glued together because it's real thin. And I cut it the same height as my book. And I believe I made it, yep, I made it two inches wide. Okay, so I'm going to line everything up using the lines on my grid, or on my mat, rather. Make sure those are nice and straight. Get our spine in there, and I'm leaving just a little fraction in between the spine and the two covers. So that gives it some room to open and close. They're not crashing into each other. Make sure those are lined up. They are. Excellent. Okay, and I'll take my um, famous favorite masking tape. And I'm going slowly to try to not make a terrible noise. And I'm going to... Oh! <laughs> my curly masking tape. I'm going to overlap the tape and the uh, spine piece. Burnish that down. I think I moved it some because I always do. that lined up again. Oh, come on. Sticky. There we go. I think that's good. Get another piece. I should have torn this off first. Hopefully, it's not blasting out your ears. Oh, and I need to move up again. Okay. Is it fighting? Oh, tell me you didn't rip. You did rip. You stink. Okay. Get that lined up. Not overlapping too much, just enough to hold it together. That might be too much. Might have overlapped it too much. Let's just move that over a little bit. thinking really hard. Burnish that down. Get it off the wax paper so we can flip it over. Oh, did I just hit the camera? Oh, for crying out loud. Sorry, guys. Always take your Dramamine before you come. I'm just wrapping it around. It's all going to get covered, so it doesn't matter that it looks kind of messy. Eh, that has all wrapped up on itself. Smooth that down. Burnish it well. Wrap that one over. 
finish it well. I'm going to use my bone folder getting there. Now I'll just pull off some little pieces to cover up here. I don't like to do it all in one piece because I get serious stick to it iveness or something. It just curls up in a ball and it makes a giant mess. So I find it easier to do two pieces. Hoping the fabric that I got to cover it is going to be wide enough. I think it is. We'll just have to be careful when we put it down. So I'll line that up with the piece that's already there. Get that all mashed down into place. The other thing the masking tape will do is knock back the brown on the um, chipboard so that it won't show through on the fabric. I don't think it would have, but you never can tell. Might as well cover it a little bit. Yeah, I'm really happy with this paper. Very summery. Oh, and there's a Sydney hair. Darn it, doggy. Okay. Give it a little, a little roll. Excellent. So now I've just taken a strip of fabric and I love this fabric. Oh good, it is wide enough. And that's gonna wrap all the way around. I'd like to, um, oh, I hit you again. I'm so sorry, you guys. It's a big book. I like to make sure that it actually is wide enough and long enough just barely long enough but I really wanted to use this fabric and I'm okay with that if I were to sell this journal I may not have used it because it may not go quite all the way to cover but I think it will so maybe we should start in here on the interior make sure we have that in the right place and I'm just going to take my fabric tack I will try to stop whacking you guys on the head. That's going to be uncomfortable. And just dot that around. Pull it over, trying to center it. If it's not exactly centered, not the end of the world. Let's see if I can flip it over without knocking you guys again. Scoot it up some. Oh yeah, I love this fabric with it. Is that directional? Well, I guess that's going to be... Oh, it is. It kind of is. Let's see, can we get that off? Yay! Okay. Woof. Could have been a problem. So I guess we're starting up here. Let's see here. There's enough on here to tack it down for a minute. So it'll be upside down on the inside, which is fine. It'll make it right side up on the outside when we wrap around, if you see what I'm saying. So that'll be good. <clears throat> Pardon me. Fumes getting to me. Come on, fabric tack. All righty, smooth that down, flip it without knocking you guys again. I'm glad I caught that. It's not terribly noticeable, but it might have bugged me. Okay, so then pull this down. Here's our fabric. Not putting so much on that it's going to glob through. but enough to hold it. Try to get up to those edges. A little bit of globbiness. So we'll just spread that out with our glue spreader. And, oh boy. 
the Fabri-Tac is making a glue volcano. And I'm stretching it a little more than I would in the hopes that I can get um, get it to meet up in the on the back. But boy, do I love that fabric. Smooth that out. <clears throat> Pardon me. Come back with the glue volcano. Get that spread out some. Boy, it's getting real thick. Yep, time for a new fabric tack. Let's go ahead and cap that up. Spread some of this out a little bit. Pull it around, and I'm off camera again, perfect. Smooth that down, and look at that, beautiful. Don't wanna bend it while it's still so wet. Look at that, yay, love it. Now some people will go because I tore the edges. Some people prefer to put a trim down there. I really like the torn edge look on the fabric. I'm fine with it. So let's turn it this way without whacking you. Look, I learned. It's amazing. Yep, it's looking good. Why do I feel like something's upside down? Do we have something upside down? Nope, I don't wanna bend it anymore while it's wet. Make sure that's all nice and stuck down. Alrighty, it's looking good. So all we have left to do is put in our end papers. And this is an old scrapbook paper, I believe from Michael's that it's fine. It just was not really my favorite, but I like how the colors go with this. I did not have any double pages, so I'm gonna have a different one on each side, which is cool. I just cut it down to be the size of the cover, um, minus a little bit, like an eighth of an inch, maybe all the way around. But all I'm going to do is take my fabric tack again. So I'm almost at the end of the pack, which I'm really glad, that Michael's paper. The double-sided thing is something I really like. It bums me out when paper is not double-sided. So I was happy to find a use for it. You could also use double-sided tape for this or your ATG gun. But this is what is here in front of me, so this is what I'm using. Fabri-Tac sticks everything, man. Miracle glue. Stinky but good. Oh, please don't do that. It's going to. Perfect. Okay. So then I'm just going to try to center this. Well, not center it, but get it where I want it. I guess it is centering. And give that a good push. Use my brayer again. Make sure to get down, down all the edges. Nice. And we'll just do the same on the front. Now I will probably put a pocket in the front or back cover because I do like to hold my monthly date stickers for the journal and just tuck in things that I want to use or if I find a magazine clipping that I like for that month I like to tuck it in there because as Elizabeth says I try to do daily journaling but I do not do it daily so I will make notes and then sit down and do a couple pages at, a, at once because I generally do not do it every single day. Oop, that was a tricky move right there. I'm gonna bring this one a little closer to the bottom because of that writing, but won't even be able to tell it's off a little bit. And we did get almost all the writing covered. I was just, I had to um, put it on in an odd way to get the motif on the front where I wanted it. So it did show the writing but I think it's gonna be just fine. And 
and that makes our cover be finished. So I will go and get some papers together and come back and we will make the pages for our journal. I'm not going to close it up because it's still wet. Don't want the fabric to pucker or anything. Uh, but this is our creative daily journal so far for the months of June and July. I'm loving it so far. Hold on, I'll be right back. All right, everybody, I am back and our cover is dry. It came out beautifully. Look at this. Still, I'm kind of torn about having that be the cover. Hmm. I'll probably get dirtier if that's the back, huh? No, well, we, can, we have a few minutes before we have to decide. And here's the inside, which I think is beautiful. Oh, if we turn it around, these guys are gonna be upside down, huh? Well, I guess I probably shouldn't change my mind then. I still love it. So, yep, it came out beautifully. And now it's time to put in some pages. Because it's my creative daily journal, I put in um, eight folios in two signatures. So it'll be June and July. Um, eight folios would give you four sides. So that's 32 pages for a 30 or 31 day month. So it works out really well. And I thought that I would show you what I had pulled out. I started putting everything together and thought, well, maybe it would be interesting for you to see how I put together pages and hinge them together because our book is landscape instead of a portrait. It's wider than the average book would be. So I thought that might be interesting. First thing I will do is include, um, this signature is gonna have three of the book pages in it. I think they're so cute. They pulled out beautifully so I can just restitch them right on that, that um, spine edge. So that's the first three that we have. Move these out of the way and we'll just look at them one at a time. And I do like to include all different kinds of paper in my uh, daily journal. So this is an old, um, somebody's thesis actually. And then this is just an old piece of bond paper that I think is beautiful. It's really nice to write on. But neither of them is long enough to be a whole folio. So I folded over one. And I think what I will do is just scoot this over. Maybe a little more. You know what I should do is get a glue book. Here's our crazy monkey again. He's gotten used a lot. And I think what I'll do is just run some glue right down here. Oop, running low on Uhu, always am. Get that down straight. Went a little wide. That helped me get my glue eraser. Here we go. Super handy thing. If you don't have one, I suggest them. Um, because I tend to make a lot of mistakes with my glue. I will link them down below. They're very inexpensive. Okay. So there we have one page. And then that is a little crooked. That's okay. Um, when I get to it in my journal, this page is too long. This is the correct width. And I can decide if I just wanna tear it off or if I wanna fold it over and make a tuck or if I wanna fold it the other direction, all sorts of things I can do. But I'll probably wait until I get to it in my journal before I make that decision. All right, here is a piece of beautiful coffee dyed paper that I really like with this um, the paper that we picked. And it was a long one. It was uh, 11 by 17 or something along those lines. So I just made it the right height, just tore it off, folded it the right width. And I thought it would be fun to put this envelope on here. Now, the envelope is too long, so I'm just going to chop it off. See if we can get that even remotely straight. Maybe. It doesn't really matter if it's not perfectly straight and then re-glue it so that it closes. 
I like to have envelopes in my journals. I think it's fun. You can put more journaling space inside or put pictures or memorabilia, whatever, whatever may happen on that day, or just use the outside for journaling. I'm going to be good about capping up my glue. Okay, so what do we want to have it do? I kind of want to have it hinge like this. And again, if I hinge it right here, I can decide which way it's going to flap when I get to that page. So I pulled out some washi tape. A lot of my washi tape is um, kind of sticky and not peeling well, so I thought I would test this one before I got all busy. Let's see how we want to do this. Let's unfold the paper, make it a little easier. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna do it this way so I don't accidentally close that envelope up. Isn't that clever? Brookie had a moment. And I am going to put glue on my washi tape because I don't trust it. And I'm just gonna leave a little bit of a space so that will open and close nicely. Try to get it straight. Oh, and my fingers are sticky. <laughs> Hopefully my big old head's not up in there. I'm trying to get that lined up. I'm trying to get it about halfway across the, um, oh, shoot. The glue is fighting me. I'm trying to get it halfway across the paper in the envelope. Smooth that down. And I'm gonna wrap it right around. It'll cover a little bit of our oven mitts, but that's okay. Oh, no it won't, look at that. Perfecto. And then I'm just gonna grab another piece to cover up the sticky right here, and we'll have a little flippy envelope. Fun. This is where washi tape in sheets comes in handy. Not quite so curly. I'm having to kind of push it down in there because the uvu is getting low, low, low. All right, that ought to do it. We'll just get it lined up right there at the top. Line it up with that piece at the bottom. Oh, wow, it matched up perfectly. What are the odds of that happening? Not good. Not high at all. I'll just snip off that excess. And smooth it down, and look at that. Beautiful. Get some of that glue off my hands. So then this will flip. And we've got the envelope flap that will still close. So it can flip that direction, or it can flip this direction, whatever we need when, or whatever I need when I get there in my journal. So there's another wide page done. Okay, here's another one. I have a digital print that I printed out. This is from um, Roxy Creations. I will link this down below as well. And then I have this beautiful piece of old ledger, which is one direction on one side, in the other direction on the other side. So something's gonna be upside down. You can't really help it. And I think all I'm gonna do on this one is a real simple um, hinge again. Just putting some glue stick on here. And then putting my digital on there. Let's see if we got it straight this time. Very rarely. Okay. And so we will have 
a page that looks like this. And again, I'll just leave this the full length and decide what to do with it later. And when you open it out, we'll have this pretty page, and then we'll have ledger and ledger. And this is the piece it's written on. So now we have another wide page. It really is easy when you just pull out all your papers and start folding them and kind of matching them up. You can do a whole lot of fun things. Here's another one. This is a page out of a stamp collector's newspaper from the 40s or the 50s, I believe. And so it was a good width. Uh, if I fold it right here, is that right? No, right here, I think. So I just fold it up to the bottom, made a little pocket, and I have a piece of kids' writing paper. It's got the lines on it. And I was kind of thinking, did I want to do? What was I thinking? Was I thinking about lining it up in there? I had an idea. I know I did. We can do that. Because then we have this piece and this piece. That'll be one page. And then when you open it up, We'll glue this page down. We'll have a pocket here. So we'll turn that into a pocket, and then we'll have all this with a pocket. Yeah, that'll work. Let's do that. So I'm trying to think which is going to be easier to glue. We'll glue this part. Getting right up to the edge. it in the middle. Heavy handed with the glue as always. And was I taking it right to the top? I think I was. Ooh. Paper's awfully soft. Excuse me. I'm just getting my, my scraper. That kid's paper is mighty thin. And yep, I went crazy with the glue again, darn it. This is just a dry baby wipe. All right, and then, oh, I got some on my mat too. Wow, I'm a crazy person. So that'll be like that. We'll have a pocket that folds up like that. do that. That'll make that. I'm just going to fold it for now. It would make this paper a little more durable, but we could make it into, I could make it into a pocket or something when I get there, depending on what I need. Yeah, that's kind of nifty, right? I think I'll just fold it and leave it. Yep. So that's kind of a fun page. And now again, we've got the width that we need for that wide landscape book. And then lastly, in this signature, this is the eighth page, I have just a piece of dot grid um, composition book paper and a piece of decorative paper from Daphne's Diary. And I think all I want to do with this one is do a little paper hinge, period. Nothing extravagant. So let's tear our monkey out. I think he's done his, his work. Turn it put it that way and look at the other side isn't that beautiful this one is printed for a project I don't know if you can see it little hearts but that's fine with me it won't bother me and then I've just got the little strip of paper that was left over when I tore it off here um, because it was too tall so I'm just using this as the hinge put some glue stick down here Make sure I'm not going over that fold in the middle. Yep, that's good. Gonna open that up, maybe swing it around just because it'll be easier. I'm right-handed. And put some glue right down here. And 
what I will do is line this up. Haha, -ha, look at that. A little more sure to get it straight that way. And fold that over. Maybe use my card to uh, get that burnished. I don't know what I did with my um, brayer. It's around here somewhere. Okay, so then we have that, and it will get a little sticky there still. It will get bound in right down the center. And again, this one's too long, and I will decide when I get there what to do with it. So there are those pages. Let me move those out of the way. And then I just have a couple other ones for the other signature. And again, I have um, this, this signature is going to have three of the original book pages. And then I have another one just like the one we did just now. And I'll do that off camera because we already did it. This is the piece of cardstock that was left from the paper on the cover. And it's the same dot grid composition book. And this is another piece of that decorative paper from Daphne's Diary. So I'm just going to use this piece and hinge them together like we just did. And then what do I have here? Let's scoot this out of the way. Oh, I have a really fun paper placemat. I love this design. Electro silver plated. It actually said dessert forks up here, but it was too tall. So we lost that part, but they're drawn full size. So this was nice because it was nice and long. I folded it over to get... A flap. This one has to fold over a little bit too, but again, I didn't want to tear it off yet because I like the decoration, so I'll decide when I get there what I want to do with it. And then this is a piece of really old stationery. It's got this beautiful texture. I don't know if you guys can see it. It kind of blows out. Um, and the deckled edge, I think it's beautiful. It's like fancy stationery from back in the day. And I think what I want to do is just join them. Yep, yeah, that looks like the right place. So let's just get a little bit of glue stick on here. Oop, and I might run a piece of washi tape down there or sew it. I'm not sure yet. So again, something I'll decide when I get there. Oops, I, I got that a little crooked, didn't I? No, I think the stationery is just a fraction bigger than the placemat taller than the placemat so that'll be okay get that corner <coughs> pardon me okay so then we have this great page nice and blank here open it up and you've got this you've got the little fold and then there's just a plain white page that begs to be decorated so that's another thing you can do. And only a few more. And here is a piece of music paper. And I just tore it down to be the right height, folded over the side. And I've got a piece of ledger paper. This is not antique or anything. It's obviously, it might be vintage, but just something I think I found at the thrift store. And what I'm going to do is butt them together like this and make this a pocket. So we can just go ahead and put some art glitter glue right here and some right here Ooh, there's something weird going on with my art glitter glue like thread or something go away don't like you hopefully that got it out okay get this straight and lined up and just butt it right in there and fold that over and poof we have a cute little pocket right there I had gone ahead and used my one inch punch, one and a half inch punch, to make a thumb notch and inked it a little bit to remind me that's what I wanted to do with this paper. And then again, we have the flap that we can decide what to do with when we get there. And I keep saying we. Are you going to come and work my journal with me, you guys? That would be fun. That would be super awesome. Okay, now I have this one. Again, I have this little paper bag, love the size of it, but it was too tall. And this was a book page 
you can see where it was stitched into the book. So I move the fold over. This is the correct width for our book. I move the fold here and then folded this over. And I was going to do, I think, I was going to do the same kind of thing with the bag here that we did with the envelope where it could flip to either side. But again, the envelope's a little long. Now I could just fold it over and glue it there. Nah, you know what? That's a little bulky. I think I'll go ahead and cut it off and re-glue it. Just to reduce a little bit, bit of bulk because I do tend to um, put a lot of stuff in my journal. Get that open. Come on, you. Get a little glue right down in there to reseal the bag. Did I call it an envelope? It's not an envelope, it's a bag. I bet you knew that <laughs> almost immediately. <laughs> okay, so here, fold that. I just folded that over a little bit. I didn't want to tear it off because it's got this beautiful aging on it. Uh, and I thought it would be a good place to glue our bag, which is the front. Here's the front of our bag, so let's just go ahead and put a little glue. And again, I could go in and sew down this edge to make sure that we have, um, you know, have it attached firmly. You would lose, I would lose some of the space in the bag if I stitch down right here. Um, so I don't know if I will, but it is an option. Or washi tape, again, just to make sure that it's attached and it's totally up to you. And then that will close like that or like that. It can flip either way and I don't mind that it's sticking out above the top. I think that's cute. I like stuff sticking out of my journal. And so then we have another wider page. And then the last one that I have is um, an old hardware hardware catalog page, which I think is so funny back when they used to type every single single page of the catalog. That must have been something. And this is from a blacksmithing notebook that I found, I think from the 70s or something. I think the paper is such a pretty color. And you know I love the fuzzies. So I thought with this one, what was I going to do? Was I going to do something different? I don't think I am. I think I'm going to do exactly the same thing, which is line these up. We could make this a tuck again. I think that's big enough to be a tuck. So let's go ahead and run some glue right along there. And run some glue right along there. I don't have a thumb notch there, but that's okay. It's, I think I can sneak one in there. I should probably do that right now before I forget. Eyeball the middle. Mm -hmm. This paper is kind of soft. Oh man, if you just set it aside, sometimes it will open up on its own. So I will do that. It's a good idea. I should have put another piece of paper in there to punch it. So I think what I will do at this point is leave you and go and do whatever sewing I want. I did make some little, well, I didn't make them. I cut some little fabric tabs that I want to sew onto some of the pages. Um, so I'll go do that kind of thing and I will come back and we will bind it. I'm not sure if it'll be the same video. I wanted to try to do it all in one video, but it's getting kind of long. So if not, I will start a new video and we will bind our journal, my journal. It's not our journal. You're not coming to journal with me unless you want to. Um, so in case I don't come back, I'll say thank you so much. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, and I'll see you real soon. Bye. Hi, guys. It's me again. Um, I decided to just pop in real quick. I went ahead and bound my signatures in. Um, you've seen it a million times. There are a million channels a million videos with a three-hole pamphlet I do have some on my channel as well so that's in there I 
sealed the cover and I'm kind of regretting it because I did, can you see that? I got bubbles and I'm hoping when it dries all the way, it will settle down. But you know, I can always collage over this or whatever. So it'll be fine. And it came out great. I made a pocket here in the front to hold all my uh, monthly and daily stickers. And let's see, actually I wanna grab a little clip so they don't jump out like that. I don't have a little clip right here. I thought I did. Alrighty, well, I'll find a bulldog clip and just clip it right there so they don't jump out every time I open it. But it came out great. Look at it. Loving the journal. I have all these options when I get to certain pages. And I guess I better get crack a lacking because, um, yeah, time's wasting. June's going. So I will keep you apprised of how this process goes. I do think I'm going to make a tassel for it because I feel like making a tassel. So I will probably make a video of that for you if you're interested. But this is how our beautiful Creative Daily Journal for June came out. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful day. And I'll